In this video, I am going to discuss about sales mix and sales quantity variances. We discussed about sales variances in an early video, which are these. We can calculate the total sales variance by adding up the sales price variance and the sales volume profit variance. We use the sales volume profit variance when there is an absorption costing system. Total sales variance is equal to sales price variance plus sales volume contribution variance. We use the contribution when there is a marginal costing system and we use the profit when there is an absorption costing system. This is how we can calculate the sales price variance which is equal to the difference between the actual selling price and the standard selling price multiplied by the actual sales units and we can calculate the sales volume profit variance by taking the difference between the actual sales units and the standard sales units and then multiply it by the standard profit per unit. Likewise, we can calculate the sales volume contribution variance. The only difference here is that we take the standard contribution per unit instead of standard profit per unit. All of these calculations are basic variance analysis. Now let's go one step further. Under advanced variance analysis, we can divide the sales volume profit variance or sales volume contribution variance into two types, which are known as sales mix profit or contribution variance and sales quantity profit or contribution variance. So now we have a new equation here. Now the total sales variance can be calculated by using the figures of sales price variance plus sales mix profit or contribution variance plus sales quantity profit or contribution variance. What we have done here is we used these figures instead of sales volume profit or sales volume contribution variance. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. We know how to calculate the total sales variance by adding up the sales price variance and the sales volume variance. Under advanced sales variances, we can divide the sales volume variance into two types, sales mix variance and sales quantity variance. Under basic variance analysis, we can calculate the total sales variance by adding up these two variances. Now we can calculate the total sales variance by adding up these three variances. So total sales variance under basic variance analysis is equal to sales price variance plus sales volume variance. Under advanced variance analysis, total sales variance is equal to sales price variance plus sales mix variance plus sales quantity variance. This is because now we can divide this variance into these two variances. In order to calculate the sales mix and sales quantity variances, you must know how to calculate the standard mix. When there is more than one product, it is known as a product mix. Simply this means if a business sells more than one product, it is known as a product mix. It can be two products, three products or even hundred products as long as there is more than one product. When there is a product mix, we can calculate the standard mix. You need to know how to calculate the standard mix for each product which is equal to budgeted sales units for a product divided by the total budgeted sales units of the product mix. It is really important to note here you need to take the budgeted values for both numerator and denominator in order to calculate the standard mix. Standard also means budgeted. So when you have to calculate the standard mix, take the budgeted values for both numerator and denominator. Using the standard mix, you have to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix. So this value comes here, then you have to multiply it by total actual sales units of the product mix. Now let's do an example so you can understand this topic. 
Company X sells two products, which are product A and product B. Simply this means company X has a product mix because there is more than one product. So they have given us the budgeted sales units for each product and actual sales units for each product. Now what we have to do is we have to calculate the standard mix for each product and actual sales units at standard mix. It is important to note here you have to calculate the standard mix for each product separately and the actual sales units at standard mix for each product separately. Now let's calculate. This is the formula. You need to remember this formula. Standard mix is equal to budgeted sales units for a product divided by the total budgeted sales units of the product mix. So first of all, let's calculate the standard mix for product A. So standard mix is equal to budgeted sales units for a product. So for product A, budgeted sales units is equal to 125 divided by total budgeted sales units of the product mix, which is equal to 125 plus 75, which is equal to 200. This is the total budgeted sales units of the product mix. So divided by 200. This is the standard mix for product A. If the question is asking you a percentage value, you have to just multiply this by 100%. If not, you can calculate the decimal value for this ratio. Now let's calculate the standard mix for product B, which is equal to budgeted sales units for product B, which is 75, divided by total budgeted sales units of the product mix, which is equal to 200. So this is the standard mix for product B. Now let's calculate the actual sales units at standard mix for both product A and B separately. So the actual sales units at standard mix is equal to standard mix which is equal to 125 divided by 200 multiplied by total actual sales units of the product mix which is equal to 140 plus 52 these are the actual values which is equal to 192 so this is the total actual sales units of the product mix so multiplied by 192 which is equal to 120 units since we are calculating the units this will be a unit value now let's calculate the actual sales units at standard mix for product B which is equal to standard mix for product B which is equal to 75 divided by 200 multiplied by the total actual sales units of the product mix which is equal to 192. This is equal to 72 units. You can double check the answer by adding up this value and this value. This should be equal to this value 192 which is the value of total actual sales units of the product mix. So 120 plus 72 is equal to 192. So the answers are correct. So this is how we can calculate the standard mix. Using the standard mix we have to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix for each product separately. In this case, there are only two products. Now let's discuss about the main topic. Under the main topic, first of all, let's discuss about the sales mix variance. Sales mix variance is the difference between the actual sales units and actual sales units at standard mix for a product when there are more than one product, which means when there is a product mix. Now we already know how to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix. In order to calculate this value for each product, we have to calculate the standard mix and then multiply it by the total 
actual sales units of the product mix. There are two methods to calculate sales mix variance. Weighted average method is considered to be superior. So the first method is individual units method. The second method is weighted average method. Weighted average method is considered to be the superior method. Now let's discuss about these two methods one by one. Remember that there is only one difference between these two methods. Individual units method. When there is a product mix, we can use the individual units method to calculate the sales mix variance. Here are the steps. First of all, you need to identify the actual sales units for each product separately. Which are these values? In this example, there are two products. There can be more than two products as well. Then what we have to do is we have to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix and then deduct these values from the actual sales units value. So we are deducting the actual sales units at standard mix from this value. So we can arrive at the variance in units. This means in the form of units, we can calculate the variances for each product. If this value is positive, it is favorable. If this value is negative, it is adverse. So these are the variances in the form of units. And then we have to multiply these values by the standard profit or contribution per unit. Depending on the costing system, you can use profit or contribution. So we can multiply the variance values from the standard profit or contribution. Remember to use the standard value here. Do not use the actual values. So finally, we can arrive at the variance amount. This is how we can use the individual units method when it comes to calculating the sales mix variance. Now let's discuss about the second method which is weighted average method. The first step is the same as for individual units method. We have to take the actual sales units values for each product separately. This is the same step as for individual units method. The second step is also like the individual units method. We have to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix for each product separately and then deduct it from the actual sales units value. So we are deducting the actual sales units at standard mix from the actual sales values. So we can arrive at the variance in the form of units. Here also, if the difference is positive, it is favorable. If the difference is negative, it is adverse. Now here is the difference between the individual units method and the weighted average method. We have to take the standard profit or contribution per unit and then deduct the average standard profit or contribution per unit value. This is the difference between these two methods. Under individual method, we took the standard profit or contribution per unit directly, but here we have to calculate the difference between the standard profit or contribution per unit and the average standard profit or contribution per unit. So here is how we can calculate the average standard profit or contribution per unit. Here also, remember that you have to take the budgeted values or the standard values. Do not take the actual values. So average standard profit or contribution per unit is equal to summation of budgeted sales units multiplied by standard profit or contribution per unit for each product divided by the total budgeted sales units. Here also use the budgeted values for both numerator and the denominator. Do not use the actual values. And finally, we can arrive at the variance amounts for each product. There is an important trick you need to remember when it comes to calculating sales mix variance, which is that the favorable and adverse values of variance in units will be equal to each other. 
what this means is this value here let's say 100 favorable since there are only two products this value will be 100 adverse if there are more than two products the favorable and the adverse values will be equal to each other in this case the numerical figures will be the same this is because there are only two products if there are more than two products the numerical figures will not be the same but the favorable values and the adverse values will be equal to each other which is true for weighted average method as well now let's do an example so you can understand this properly calculate the sales mix profit variance for product d so now there are five products a b c d e they have given us the variances in units for each product which means they have already calculated the difference between the actual sales units and the actual sales units at standard mix for each product and then they have given us the standard profit per unit for each product which means here we have to use the individual units method because there are no data on average standard profit per unit for each product so simply we have to multiply these values and calculate the variance amount but here for product D they have not given us the variance in units value so how we can find this value when there is a product mix as I said earlier favorable values and the adverse values are equal to each other in terms of variance in unit figures which means we can add all the favorable and adverse values separately then they will be equal to each other the difference between these favorable and adverse values will be the value here so now let's calculate and see so there are three favorable values 750 100 850 let's add this all up which is equal to 1700 the only adverse value here is this value 2500 2500 is not equal to 170 so the difference will be the value for variance in units for product d so what is the difference the difference is 800 how we can decide that whether this is a favorable value or an adverse value the favorable value side is less than the adverse value side so this will be favorable this is because if we add 800 to this value it will become now let's see this is the favorable side this is the adverse side 750 plus 100 plus 850 and the difference 800 is equal to 2500 so the summation of favorable side is 2500 is equal to 2500 so the value for product D is 800 favorable remember that favorable and adverse values are equal to each other in terms of variances in unit form let's say if there are only two products product a and product b let's say the variance in the form of units for product b is 25 adverse so what will be the value for product a it will be 25 favorable because favorable and the adverse values are equal to each other here when it comes to sales mix variances you need to have a thorough understanding about these points we are going to discuss now and also you have to remember these points if the standard profit per unit is higher than the average standard profit it is highly profitable simply this means if the standard profit is higher than the average standard profit for a product the product is a highly profitable product if the standard profit per unit is lower than the average standard profit it is less profitable this means if the standard profit is less than the average standard profit the product is less profitable 
Now you know how to calculate the average standard profit using this formula. Average standard profit or contribution per unit is equal to this section here. And now it is the most important part when it comes to sales mix variances. When it comes to sales mix variances, the following points are vital to remember. Higher sales of highly profitable products is favorable. Less sales of less profitable products is also favorable. Let's simplify this. If the business can sell more of high profitable products, it is favorable. And if the business can sell less of less profitable products, it is also favorable. Higher sales of less profitable products is adverse. Less sales of highly profitable products is also adverse. Let's simplify this as well. If the business can sell higher of less profitable products, it is adverse. And also, if the business can sell less of highly profitable products, it is also adverse. Because businesses need to sell more of more profitable products and less of less profitable products. You need to remember these points when it comes to sales mix variances. These are really, really important. Now let's do this example so you can understand what we have learned so far. Company X sells two products which are product A and product B. Calculate sales mix contribution variance for both products. So they have given us the data for product A and product B. We can calculate the sales mix contribution variance using two methods. The first method is individual units method. The second method is weighted average method. Let's calculate the sales mix contribution variance using both of these methods. First of all, let's use the individual units method. So the first step is to identify the actual units for each product separately. For product A, it is 140. For product B, it is 52. Then we have to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix. So what is the standard mix? We have to take the summation of these two values which is 200. And then we have to take the summation of these two values which is equal to 192. Now we can calculate the actual sales units at standard mix. So for product A standard mix is 125 divided by 200 multiplied by 192 which is equal to 120. As now you know we can calculate the next figure directly which is 192 minus 120 which is equal to 72. Now we have to calculate the variance in units which is equal to 140 minus 120 which is a positive value 20 so this is favorable. As now you know we can guess the variance in units value for product B. It should be 20 adverse. Let's calculate and see. 52 minus 72 which is negative 20. So the answer is correct. Now we have to calculate the standard profit or contribution per unit. Here we use the marginal costing system. So we do not use the profit figure. We use the contribution figure. So the standard contribution is equal to budgeted selling price minus budgeted variable cost per unit. Remember that do not use the actual figures. Use the budgeted or the standard figures. So 62 minus 48 which is equal to 14 for product B 40 minus 22 which is 18. Now we can calculate the variance for each product. 20 multiplied by 14 and for product B 20 multiplied by 18. This is equal to 280 favorable 
so this is equal to 360 adverse so these are the final values now let's calculate the variances using the weighted average method so this is the weighted average method the first three rows are same as for the individual units method so let's get the answers from the early calculation so this is 20 favorable and 20 adverse and favorable 20 adverse so now we have to calculate the average contribution per unit we do not use the profit figure here which is equal to budgeted sales units for product a which is equal to 125 multiplied by standard profit or contribution per unit so the standard contribution is equal to 62 minus 48 which is equal to 14 plus now for product b budgeted sales units which is equal to 75 multiplied by standard contribution per unit which is equal to 40 minus 22 which is equal to 18 divided by the total budgeted sales units which means 125 plus 75 so 200 units remember that there will be only one average standard profit to contribution per unit for every product so the average standard contribution per unit is equal to 15.5 dollars per unit so now let's see what is the high profitable product and less profitable product so the average standard contribution is 15.5 dollars per unit and the product a is less than the average value so the product a is less profitable and the product b is higher than the average value so this is the highly profitable product so now what we have to do is we have to take the difference between the standard profit or contribution per unit and the average standard profit or contribution per unit in this case we only use the contribution so the standard contribution per unit for product a is 14 minus average standard contribution per unit which is 15.5 so the difference is negative 1.5 which means we have sold more of less profitable product so this will be an adverse value so 20 multiplied by 1.5 30 adverse i hope this is clear now this became an adverse value because the company has sold more but they have sold the less profitable product let's go back here higher sales of less profitable product so the variance will become an adverse now let's calculate for the product b so the standard contribution is 18 the average standard contribution is equal to 15.5 which is equal to 2.5 this is a positive value this means standard contribution is higher than the average standard contribution so simply this means they have sold less of more profitable product so the final variance will be an adverse variance so now let's calculate the final variance which is equal to 20 multiplied by 2.5 which is equal to 50 adverse always remember that just because the variance in the units is favorable the final variance may not be favorable you have to remember these relationships then only you can decide whether the final variance is favorable or adverse in this case both these variances are adverse the reason being they have sold less of more profitable product now let's calculate the total sales mix contribution variance which are the summation of these two values 30 adverse plus 50 adverse which is equal to 80 adverse this is the total value 
Now let's calculate the total sales mix contribution variance under individual units method. So total sales mix contribution variance is equal to 280 favorable plus 360 adverse. This is equal to 80 adverse. So this is the total value. As now you can see both methods gave us the same value 80 adverse 80 adverse but for individual products the variances are different here for product a 30 adverse and the individual method it is 280 favorable for product b here 360 adverse and the weighted average method it is 50 adverse Always remember that even though the variances for the same product is different under the two methods, the final value will be the same. Benefits of sales mix variance identifies the impact of changes in the sales mix. Sales mix variance helps to understand how changes in the proportion of different products or services sold affect overall sales revenue. It provides insights into the contribution of each product or service to the overall sales performance. Supports strategic decision making. By analyzing sales mix variance, businesses can evaluate the performance of different product lines or service offerings. This information can aid in making strategic decisions such as allocating resources, adjusting pricing strategies, or focusing on specific product lines to maximize profitability. Enables performance evaluation. Sales mix variance allows businesses to compare actual sales mix with the budgeted or expected mix. It helps in evaluating the effectiveness of sales strategies and identifying areas for improvement. Managers can take corrective actions to align the sales mix with the desired objectives. Limitations of sales mix variance Ignores external factors Sales mix variance focuses solely on the internal factors affecting sales such as product mix. It doesn't consider external factors like market conditions, competition or changes in customer preferences. Therefore, it may provide an incomplete picture of the overall sales performance. Assumes static budget Sales mix variance assumes that the budgeted sales mix is fixed and remains constant throughout the evaluation period. However, in a dynamic business environment, the sales mix may change due to various factors. This assumption limits the applicability of sales mix variance in situations where the budgeted sales mix is not representative of the actual market conditions. Now let's discuss about the sales quantity variance. Since now you know about the sales mix variance, this will be much easier. Sales quantity variance is the difference between the actual sales units at standard mix and budgeted sales units for a product when there are more than one product. This means when there is a product mix. Now you know how to calculate the actual sales units at the standard mix but now we have to take the difference between that and the budgeted sales units for sales mix variance we calculated the difference between the actual sales unit at standard mix and the actual sales units now we are going to take the difference between the budgeted sales units there are two methods to calculate sales quantity variance Weighted average method is considered to be superior. The first method is individual units method and the second method is weighted average method. Weighted average method is considered to be the superior. Now let's get to know about the two methods. Here also there is only one difference between these two methods. Individual units method. So here are the steps. The first step is to calculate the actual sales units at standard mix. So for product A and product B, this will be the values. There can be more than two products as well. Then we have to deduct the budgeted sales units.
So we can arrive at the variances in the form of units. If the difference is positive, it is favorable. If the difference is negative, it is adverse. The next step is to multiply the standard profit or contribution per unit by the variance in the form of units. So we can multiply these values in order to get the variance amount. So this is the individual units method. Now let's discuss about the weighted average method. The first step is also same as for individual units method. We have to calculate the actual sales units at standard means. So these will be the values. Then we have to deduct the budgeted sales units which is also the same as before. So we can calculate the variance in the form of units. If the variance in the form of units is positive, it is favorable. If it is negative, it is adverse. Now here is the main difference when it compared to the sales mix variance. If this value is positive, it is going to be a favorable value. So the final value will be also favorable. If this value is negative, so the final value will also be adverse. We do not have to consider about the profitability of the products like we did for sales mix variances. Because we only take here the average standard profit or the contribution per unit, we are not going to calculate the difference between the standard profit or contribution. We are directly taking the average standard profit or contribution per unit here. So we can directly calculate the variance amount. Like we did earlier, we can calculate the average standard profit or contribution per unit using this formula. Always remember to take the standard values or the budgeted values here. Do not take the actual values. So this is equal to the summation of budgeted sales units multiplied by the standard profit or contribution per unit for each product divided by the total budgeted sales units. There is another important thing you need to remember here. The average standard profit or contribution per unit will be the same for every product. Let's say for product 1, the average standard profit or contribution is $5. So for product P, it will be the same. Let's say there are more than two products. For every product, the average standard profit or the contribution will be the same value. You only need to remember these two points when it comes to sales quantity variances. If the actual sales at standard mix is higher than the budgeted sales, sales quantity variance is favorable. Simply this means if the actual sales at standard mix higher than the budgeted sales, it will be a favorable variance. If the actual sales at standard mix is lower than the budgeted sales, sales quantity variance will be adverse. These points are really simple to remember. Now let's do this example so you can understand sales quantity variance better. Company X sells two products which are product A and product B. Calculate sales quantity contribution variance for both products. So they have given the data in this table for product A and product B. Now let's use the individual units method in order to calculate the sales quantity contribution variance. So the first step is to take the actual sales units at standard mix. So let's calculate this. What is the standard mix? It is equal to 200. So the total value is 200. For product A, the budgeted value is 125 multiplied by the actual sales units which is equal to 192 so 192 this is equal to 120 so for product b it is 75 over 200 multiplied by 192 it is equal to 72 so these are the actual sales units at standard mix for each product now let's deduct the budgeted sales units. So the budgeted sales units of product A is equal to 125. And the budgeted sales units of product B is 75 units. Now let's calculate the variances in the form of units.
this is equal to negative 5 which means 5 adverse for product p 72 minus 75 this is equal to negative 3 so 3 adverse so this means the final variances will also be adverse so standard profit or contribution per unit we do not consider profit here so the standard contribution per unit for product a is 62 minus 48 is equal to 14 for product b 40 minus 22 which is equal to 18 now we can calculate the variances for product a and product b which is equal to 5 multiplied by 14 this is equal to 70 for product b 3 multiplied by 18 this is equal to 54 so the total sales quantity contribution variance is equal to 70 adverse plus 54 adverse this is equal to 124 adverse now let's use the weighted average method and calculate the sales quantity contribution variances for product A and product B then calculate the total value weighted average method the first three steps are the same as before so let's get the answers from the early example Theta 5 adverse 3 adverse for product A 5 adverse for product B 3 adverse so the final variances will also be adverse not like for sales mix variances under weighted average method we can directly identify whether the final variance is favorable or not depending on the variances in the form of units then we have to calculate the average standard profit or contribution per unit we do not consider profit here so let's calculate the average standard contribution per unit we can use this equation we calculated this figure earlier so let's go back and take that answer here we have the average standard contribution per unit which is equal to 15.5 so this is equal to 15.5 now we can directly use this answer for both products 15.5 15.5 remember the average standard profit or contribution per unit for every product will be the same so finally we can calculate the variance amount 5 multiplied by 15.5 which is equal to 77.5 for product b 3 multiplied by 15.5 which is equal to 46.5 now let's calculate the total sales quantity contribution variance which is equal to 77.5 adverse plus 46.5 adverse so the total variance is equal to 124 adverse this is dollars this is how we can use the individual units method and the weighted average method Always remember variance amounts for individual products will not be the same when we use two different methods but the total value will be the same. So here the total value is 124 adverse and here also the total value is 124 adverse. So the final values will be the same but the individual values will not be the same now let's discuss about the benefits of sales quantity variance identifies the impact of changes in sales volume sales quantity variance helps to understand how changes in the actual quantity of units sold compared to the budgeted quantity effect overall sales revenue it highlights the volume related factors that contribute to variations in sales performance assist in evaluating sales effectiveness by analyzing sales quantity variance businesses can assess the effectiveness of their sales efforts including factors like pricing strategies promotional activities sales force performance and market demand it provides insights into the success of 
sales initiatives and helps identify areas for improvement. Facilitates performance measurement. Sales quantity variance enables businesses to compare actual sales volume with the budgeted or expected volume. It serves as a performance measurement tool, helping managers track the progress towards sales targets and take appropriate actions to address any deviations. Here are the limitations of sales quantity variance. Ignores price related factors. Sales quantity variance focuses solely on the volume of units sold and does not consider changes in product prices. Variations in prices can significantly impact sales revenue and this aspect is not captured by sales quantity variance. Therefore, it provides limited information on the overall revenue performance. Oversimplifies sales analysis. Sales quantity variance assumes that the only significant factor affecting sales is the volume of units sold. It overlooks other factors such as changes in customer preferences, product quality, marketing efforts or market conditions. Relying solely on sales quantity variance may result in an incomplete understanding of the factors influencing sales performances. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.